Hi, I'm Seb Ben Yaakov. The title of this presentation is Basics of PWM Converters Controller Design. This is a part two of a two-part lecture. The first part is already available on YouTube. Please look at it before you see part two because the fundamentals of the techniques that I'm using in part two are given in part one. Uh, the link to part one is given at the comment section of this clip. So if you look at there, you can just click it on and get to part one. We are going to look at a buck converter and see how we can design a simple controller around it. The buck converter includes the input section, a switcher, a diode, the inductor, a capacitor, the ESR equivalent series resistance of the capacitor, which as we'll see is important because you can actually use the effect of this ESR uh, on the converter in the design of the controller. And then we have an equivalent resistor which sort of represents the load. Now the transfer function of a buck uh, converter will look something like that. We see here, first of all, the gain. This is small signal V out over small signal duty cycle. This is the magnitude. We see a number of curves here, which are for different input voltage. It is very important to realize that an, as the input voltage will change, then the uh, transfer function will change. And this is something you will have to take into account when designing the controller. Associated with the magnitude, we have the phase. The phase starts with a zero degree, and then it goes down up to approximately uh, getting close to 180. This is because this portion of the curve here of the magnitude is rolling down at a rate of minus 40 dB per decade, which corresponds to a maximum phase shift of 180 degree. And then we have here a zero, which we don't see it very nicely in this uh, continuous curve. And this zero actually introduces a phase lead and consequently the phase goes up and it will approach 90 degree. So this portion is very important because a roll off of minus 20 dB per decade is very easy uh, to close the loop at. So we have the magnitude, we have the phase, and it is important also to realize that this uh, transfer function that I've shown before, this, this is one, is for the continuous current mode. Now, if the load is getting to be lower or the equivalent resistance becoming higher and higher, the converter will go into a discontinuous mode and the transfer function will change. Now, the major change is, of course, in the rate of uh, roll-off here, which is more like a minus 20 dB per decade rather than a minus 40, which, as far as the control goes, is actually better. However, the uh, bandwidth is a little bit lower. And here we see the phase, which now doesn't go that low, that is, the there isn't that much a lag here and in fact it now getting back almost to zero so that uh, in the case of a discontinuous mode uh, the situation is easier obviously we have one controller so this one controller has to cope with the continuous current mode and with this discontinuous current mode so here we have uh, the two basic curves one for the continuous current mode, CCM, and one for the DCM. So as I'm showing in part A, the technique that I'm using is based on one over B, a graph of one over B, that is drawn here to intersect with the transfer function of the plant, in this case of the uh, buck converter. Now possible um, closure of this loop would be here, with a 1 over B, which is going up plus 20 dB per decade. Now, this is really, well, it'll be stable, but the bandwidth will be extremely narrow. So this is really not practical. Another way to do it 
is to have a 1 over b which rolls off at minus 20 dB per decade. The basic converter goes at minus 40 dB, this is minus 20. The rate of closure here is minus 20 dB per decade, which is fine, and we can get a nice uh, phase margin here. But this would require the 1 over b of this shape, which is a little bit more complex uh, to synthesize. Uh, we look at it a little bit later. Now, a 1 over b of this nature, which is simple, uh, is not good because um, the phase will be just uh, too close to 180 degrees. That is, the phase margin will be almost zero, and this is not a way to go. Another way would be to use a uh, 1 over b that here is a straight line, and if this is a straight line and this goes at minus 20 dB per decade, as we have seen, uh, we can get here a nice uh, phase margin. And uh, again, this is due to the ESR. Now remember, ESR is not a very well-known uh, resistance value. In fact, it can change uh, from one capacitor to another, and it might change with temperature. So this is not a very accurate zero point, but the general behavior will be the same for uh, different capacitors. So in many times, designers are actually using uh, this technique. Now, in order to close the loop with a 1 over b that has this portion here straight, we need to synthesize a controller or a transfer function or a network that will have a b which looks like this. Now, the features of this shape are that we need here a certain gain. Uh, this is b, this is 1 over b, so once we know this 1 over b, we can uh, we know what is b because this is uh, 1 over and in the, in the logarithmic scale it's just a uh, mirror image. And then we would like to have this portion here very high because this portion here adds to the open loop gain and we want this open loop gain at low frequency to be very high. Well, the open loop gain will be b times the plan times a. And we want it to be very high because the higher the loop gain, the smaller will be the DC or low frequency error. So this is a feature that we like to have as high as we can. So obviously, if we like to have this to be a very high gain, uh, and this is given, then uh, we have to have a connection here, a roll off, it'll be minus 20 dB per decade because we are going to use one capacitor. And here is a circuit that will realize or can be designed to have the shape that we have seen just a minute ago. It's a lag leg um, type of a network. We can understand the operation of this network by looking at the two edges, a very low frequency and at a very high frequency. At very low frequency, the impedance of the capacitor is very high, so that the gain of this block is basically the open loop of the operational amplifier. This is very high. This is very good because then the DC error will be very small in our uh, converter. Now, at high frequency, the capacitor impedance will be much smaller than RF, then the gain will be RF over RN, and we'll have to choose this ratio to be the value that we need in order to close the loop. So uh, we have this information, that is, we know what is the gain that we need. We also know uh, that the breakpoint of this uh, transfer function is 1 over 2 pi CFRF. This is the time constant of this uh, network. So. Here is a simplified diagram or graph of the buck converter. We have information about the buck converter. We know the gain at low frequency. We know the roll-off at minus 40 dB per decade and uh, that the break point is at 2 kilohertz. So we can calculate the gain or the attenuation here to be minus 35 dB. And now at 5 kilohertz, we go from here to here. This is a minus 20 dB per decade. 
And of course, if you have a slope of 20 dB or any slope that you have in the logarithmic scale, then the ratio of the gain will be like the ratio of the frequencies um, to the power of s. This is the slope at 20 minus 20, 40 or minus 40 divided by 20. So by this equation, you can get the gain that you need at this point, okay? So here it is. This is now b, not 1 over b. Uh, and of course, uh, in order to compensate for the attenuation that we have at the back, uh, we need here gain uh, so that the total will be 0 dB. And uh, we calculate this uh, gain to be 42, uh, about 42 dB. Okay, so now we have all the information we need. We have to decide what would be the breakpoint of this network, since we are working at 5, we want the crossover frequency to be at 5 kilohertz. Uh, I'm choosing 1 kilohertz, which is a half a decade earlier, so that the breakpoint here will not affect too much the phase margin, because it will add something uh, to the phase margin. So, knowing this, and knowing the gain that we, that we have, which is 42 dB, I can get here that the ratio of these resistors uh, should be 130 and that that the um, once I choose the values of this capacity these resistors I have chosen Rn to be 2 kilo ohms uh, so therefore RF is uh, 270 kilo ohms and from that I'm getting that the capacitor should be 560 picofarad. So that's it. So we have just sort of uh, synthesize the network uh, to get us the controller that we need. However, if we wish to get a crossover point at a section at which the plant, that is the converter, rolls off at minus 40 dB per decade, then for a stable st system we need then 1 over B, which rolls off here at minus 20 dB per second. Now for this we can use a a network that has a transfer function of 1 over b uh, of this nature. And here it is. Uh, this is the portion that we need. Here we are going to cut uh, the uh, plant transfer function. And 1 over, that is the actual transfer function of the network, of the controller, will be of this nature. And the double zero, here it is, one zero, and this is another zero. So that we start with a uh, high gain, there's a pole here, and then we have double zero, which brings us uh, to this plus 20 dB per decade. And then uh, this will be a natural roll-off uh, due to the limited uh, bandwidth, uh, actually, of the amplifier. So to synthesize a network that will have a transfer function of this nature, uh, we can use this network, uh, which I'm showing here in general. I'm not going into the very fine details of this network. And uh, with these two sections here, uh, the input and the output section, uh, we can uh, synthesize something of this nature. And I'm showing here all the breakpoints uh, of this network. However, this is a approximate expressions because uh, uh, this doesn't take into account the effect of uh, one breakpoint on the other. Uh, it just assumes that each one is separate, which is correct if the distances here are, are fairly large. So this is an uh, approximate expression for these uh, breakpoints in the transfer function. So let me summarize now the issue of uh, controller for PWM converters. Uh, we have seen that a roll-off of minus 20 dB per decade is really easy to control. It's sometimes called the dominant pole because then you can use it just a simple uh, lag lead uh, network. A minus 40 dB per decade is a little bit more complex. Uh, you need a more sophisticated controller, but uh, this is something that can be uh, accomplished. 
in order to simplify things and actually to uh, stabilize even more the system, one can use current feedback, which I'm not discussing uh, in this lecture. A current feedback is a very nice feature because what it does, it actually reduces the order of the system. That is, it actually reduces the number of state variables. That is, if we have a bug, which is basically a second order system, if we use current feedback, it will reduce it to a one state system. That is, the roll off would be minus 20 dB per decade, which is easy to uh, then compensate with an outer loop. So we are going to have there a inner loop of current feedback and an outer loop uh, of a voltage feedback, uh, which will be uh, rather easy to implement. Well, this brings me to the end of this uh, part of the presentation. I hope you have enjoyed it and that you find it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.